Hi, my name is Bill DeYoung. This is the Catalyst Sessions one more time. And uh, joining me today, she hasn't been in the hot seat here since April 16th. I figured this out. So we're going to check in. Is that two months or three months? That's three months. This is Maureen McDowell. She is the uh, founder and CEO and crazy woman in charge of Keep St. Pete Lit, which has a very specific function here in town, which we're going to talk about. Hello, how are you today? Good, how are you? Haven't seen you since um, typewriter talks. I know. <laughs> I, I interviewed you yesterday, and we're basically, it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, we're turning, well, I'm, we're turning the tables now. And, yeah, we, uh, we fell asleep in our chairs, and now we're, you're, you're, you're interviewing me. Well, we changed, we changed clothes, too, so, yeah. Maybe Same you stuff, did. different day. Different <laughs> stuff on a different day. April 16th. Wow. You know, I think uh, one of the things we talked about in typewriter talks is I was saying how I've been revisiting with folks who did the Catalyst sessions before, and yeah. there's a kind of a less than subtle change. There's more of a, a sense of resignation now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, well, we'll get out of this eventually, but what are we doing in the meantime? Whereas I think before it was more like, it's got to end soon. It's, you know, anytime now. And how are you? Let me put it that way. How are you dealing with things? Uh, you know, the first thing, first time it was kind of shock, and then it was like uh, immediately went into like, how do we pivot? And um, now I'm kind of, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say I'm excited, but I'm, I'm actually excited because I, I think we were, we had an unutilized online platform for our classes and ways of partnering with people. So now we have some new ideas that are percolating of partnerships where we can actually spread beyond just our regional area. I mean, with, with sure. online, you could go international if you want. So that's kind of got my gears going about how can we serve not just our local communities, but also other communities that need, um, you know, services we offer. That's kind of the, uh, the, the hidden blessing in all of this. Mm -hmm. This is another recurring theme, but we didn't, we didn't know that, this would work so well the virtual stuff everybody we all miss each other you're an introvert yeah. i'm an introvert so we don't miss that people that much but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. but but the idea that you can still accomplish your goals yeah you know in in yeah. the new this new fangled virtual world we have tell me about the classes uh you know what what are they so we have writing classes. Um, we have a whole group of online classes right now, which we didn't have that before. And then we're having, we, uh, believe it or not, Zoom was like a concept for me, but I didn't really kind of understand how it worked. And now we have writing meetups where we have a poetry gym, which is taking place this weekend. And then we have writer's gym where people can workshop their work. And what's great about Zoom is you can actually show your work. You can show your desktop to the group. Oh, yeah, so, right. Yeah. And we actually have one of our students is, lives in Maine. And so she's sharing the writers group with her whole Maine writers group because she goes away for the summer. So it's kind of like. Oh, she's a local yeah. person who lives there. In the yeah. And a lot oh, of our right. students, um, especially when we had classes at the Maureen Arts Center in person, um, were uh, snowbirds. So they would go away for the summer, so our classes would drop down. But it's also like we're talking about possibly, um, there's some people that want our kids, our youth writing classes, but uh, they're North County or farther out, and I didn't want to send my writing teachers there. And now I'm reaching out to them to talk about, like, can we just do Zoom classes with your students? And um, they're, it's opening up all these different possibilities. So, so can you see in the, in the foreseeable future i guess a combination of live things and more virtual is that what you're thinking we're gonna yeah, yeah yeah i mean i right now currently we have no plans to go in person like i mm -hmm. i i don't pay my teachers enough to put them in the you know i i, I wish i was I, I don't know if it's i'm allowed to say this i wish i was in charge of the school system and i could say the same thing because mm -hmm. i mean we don't i don't pay our we don't pay our teachers enough to put them in harm's way so um, we are going to be moving in hopefully to the factory, um, coming up in September into office space. And we talked about once it cools down using their outside space as classrooms, oh, yeah. so that might be a possibility. Yeah. And that's, what's wonderful about Florida. I mean, I'm already thinking of events, um, uh, that we can do in neighborhoods and, you know, create social distancing 
and people are in masks and you know if you're outside and everybody's masked up you're it drops significantly the threat of covid so there's a lot of possibilities once the weather cools down can't do it now no 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 i wouldn't yeah no. yes yes let's spend the next half hour talking about the weather <laughs> uh, uh yeah so are you still doing the, the poetry uh thing on uh wednesday wednesdays at studio 620 yeah. online We're we're actually going to morph up our schedule a bit next month because another facet of Zoom that I, I don't think I was quite ready when all this hit to kind of create online programming where people are engaged other than um, live videos. So next month, um, we had a conflict with Wednesdays um, last month, or I guess it was this month, our book club. Uh, in partnership with Studio 620 is the first Wednesday of the month and um, it was overlapping with the poetry hour that we were doing and also we have true stories the second Wednesday of the month and those were competing so we're just going to go to uh, all of our programming um, through is going to be on Wednesdays so we'll have book club the first Wednesday of the month true stories storytelling show with Lisa Kirchner second and then the poetry hour which is really a conversation with me and Denzel Green and Sarah yes. uh, Reese, and we all live in the same building. <laughs> yes, I remember so you telling me that, yeah. It, it was kind of that, you know, punk rock way of like, how do we create programming and still be around each other? And then- So you're gonna um, alternate these three is what you're saying. Yeah, that'll be the third Wednesday. And then we're gonna do the poetry open mic again via Zoom so people can, which is what True Stories do does. You can register for $5 and then you'll be able to read your work via Zoom, and then we're going to, you know, put that out through Facebook Live at the studio. You, you so. know, Lisa, Lisa was on here a couple of weeks ago, and, uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, because I'm an introvert, too, she, okay. she's so good that she almost convinced me to send in my $5 and just and do it. You know, oh, it's yeah. like, maybe next time I will, you know. Yeah. Um, nostalgia. That's perfect for you. The theme this month is nostalgia. Oh yeah, I could I could yeah. uh, I could tell a tiki garden story. That's cool. You know? Yeah, you should. You, you should. know, true to form, like we were talking about the tiki gardens thing that I did yesterday in the vintage St. Pete, and uh, it came out yesterday. I was so into it for a week or ten days, however long I kind of worked on it, was getting the photos together. It's I can barely even remember it today. I've moved on. Yeah, that's that's another sort of tenet of of. of weekly daily journalism is that once you're done with it you're kind of done with it yeah i relate though i mean yeah. i can't even think about all the events that we do it's like you you kind of create something and then you give it your all and then you just say okay we did our best and move on to the next thing next you yeah. have to you have mm -hmm. to you know rekindle you rekindle your enthusiasm i think that's a tv show and <laughs> <laughs> that's curve your enthusiasm isn't it you 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 describe yourself as an introvert. You always have, and and, and we've talked about that. I I don't want to get like too personal or anything. That's not why we're here. Um, um, and and I, I'm trying to remember. I think you said that you know you were an artist. You were studying pottery. Yeah. You're going to be a potter. Yeah. And and it w when you hit thirty, am I getting this right? You had a sort of a life changing moment. Yeah. Yeah. What, I mean, I, I I didn't really know. I've always written. And I, uh, something that comes natural, you don't necessarily take it seriously, but I never really thought I'll grow up and be a writer. I did think I would be a photojournalist, actually. I thought that would be cool. Yeah, and, um, you know, a long braid and adopt a oh. child from Africa. This is, this is yeah. my thing. I can and, see it. Yeah, okay. Of course, be single, because who could handle me? Um, <laughs> and uh, so... And then I thought about being a photographer. I went through mi midwife phase, just all these different things. But towards my end of my 20s, I, I kind of accomplished all my goals. I, I married my high school sweetheart. We had a cool house in Asheville. I, and I was miserable. And so I went through, I really went through this existential crisis and said, you know, what am I supposed to do? And then poetry, just like I wrote a poem one day and I just knew. And I never really, I never looked back. Well, how did, how did that, you said you just wrote a poem one day. How did you discover that? I mean, was it sort of, was it a Wairika moment or just God, I feel so much moment. better? It, it was. was a Wairika moment. Yeah, it was a lot of introspection and just be, being lost. And even with, even with doing pottery, it just, 
I, it just, I would see other people doing it and they were thriving and I could just tell it was their thing. And I, mm. it, it just wasn't my, it wasn't my thing. So it was a eureka moment and I never looked back. And, and recently, you know, as a poet, I have two books, but I never really got into the like submission, sending my writing out and getting mm -hmm. published in journals. And I mean, I'm going on 15 years and I never went that route at all. And I realized this weekend, I, I'm more of a like performance poet, not spoken word, but I like, like I'm working on a partnership right now with a fellow dancer. And I'm thinking of another writing a book about my family of prose poems, but I'm already seeing it as like a stage production. So, and, and wow. by, by all of these kind of different events through Keep St. Pila and other things, I realized I've created this entire portfolio of work unconsciously. <laughs> you, you've created yeah. yourself, you know. And, yeah, well, you yeah. mentioned that about yourself, you know, creating well, your... Well, did I? But yeah, I mean, the idea is that you, you found it and suddenly you blossomed and everything all the flowers started shooting out of your head you know you were growing and, and blossoming in that um it, it's interesting to me if we could get into the the deep bowels of this for a second it's interesting to me that the idea of poetry because i'm i'm not a poet right but but the way i think about it was was that it's more an internal thing it's more of a, i did this for me i i put this down you know, to express the rhythm of how things work in my brain. But then there's also this, as you say, performance or show or publishing, showing it to others, yeah. you know. When did that change for you? I mean, you said for it didn't occur to you for a while to actually send things out or show them to people? Well, I mean, I did my first book. My ex-husband was a graphic designer and he mm -hmm. laid out the first two books. So the idea was let's create a publishing house like St. P. Press is now. Like that's how all it, it all started. And uh, we published another writer's work too, who since has been picked up by Copper, um, Copper Canyon Press. Um, you know, it, it was really kind of create your own reality. And I grew up in the punk rock scene where it's like, you know, you do it yourself. But I also like the freedom in that. Like I wanted creative freedom. That's yeah. kind of the basis of my whole life. So I, I created my own press so I could have creative control of my poetry books. So, so you didn't have to send them to a journal. So somebody wouldn't say, why don't you use the word putrefaction here instead of, uh, <laughs> or whatever. Is, is that what it is? I mean, a, a control <laughs> issue. You know, it depends on who the person, it, it prop, I mean, maybe my whole life is a control issue. I mean, <laughs> you know. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure you don't relate to that, Bill. Um, <laughs> no, but, not at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are Scorpios, so yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I and I think about it because I I have a lot of younger poet friends, and they're like submitting to like six or seven hundred places a year, yeah. and it's like. And I went through this like, am I, am I? Uh, my daughter is coming in. Oh yeah, yeah. She I'm, came in last sister. time. Let's see if she's grown any. <laughs> she's going out with my sister. Oh, there you go. Part of being a mom. Um, yeah. Yeah, she yes. came in last time. She felt it. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, what was your question? Uh, it was control. You were talking about control, how you yeah, could. Creative um, control. I like that yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, come see, come side. You know, whatever. But Keep St. P. Lit came out of that same kind of, uh, I don't know if it's selfishness or need. It, I wasn't getting my needs met as a reader and writer. And mm -hmm. it all kind of morphed out of that you know and and also speaking of being an introvert like I I can get on front in front of people on stage I can I can put on that role but it's it's exhausting you know like I need to take a nap and recover the next day after so but that's what's <laughs> how, nice to think about this you know how, how are you yeah I know this is yeah how are you how are you with you know reading your work in public how do you do with that um I kind of, I kind of say a little prayer. Like you mentioned, like, it's not about you. Yeah. Just in typewriter talks, like it's not about me. I, I, I try to just trust that the poet that I was at that time, like my first book, a lot of my poet, I've grown so much as a poet. Sure. But I well, as a person too, book. right? Yeah. And I, but I still feel that those poems have value at the time. They felt 
really important to somebody, you know, cause those were written throughout my twenties. Most of them. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, if you get up and one person is touched by what you do, I think you've succeeded in something. That's how I kind of, sure. look at it. and you yeah. know, bring your a game to everything. Well, you know, we were talking yesterday. Yes, folks, it was yesterday about, um, you know, journalism and, 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 uh, well, at the same time, it's not it's not about me, yeah. and I'm thinking it's the same thing for you. It's it's very much the writing is very much about me, you yeah. know, and 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 the the gift, if you will, or the the price at the end of the rainbow. I don't know, is that when people can somehow relate to it or it moves them somehow, you know. Or if you're a poet, if you're a songwriter, I suppose if you're a visual artist, or if you you're a journalist. You know, I mean, I can just turn news out there, which is something else again. But if you write a story, people go, wow, I, I feel different at the end than I did at the beginning. Then you've succeeded. Plus, but I already know that it worked for me. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, but you and you also have to like, you're not going to enjoy your job if you're just doing it for other people. I mean, no, I, mean, I, 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 I wouldn't, see that. you know, and I think that that's the power of literature. It can really kind of. Um, it resonates with people like uh, one person is going to read a book totally different than another person. Yeah. And, and you kind of, you put the words out there and you just kind of trust the people to take it what it is. And, and also it's poetry. Like, you know, I, I wasn't naive about what it meant to be a poet. I mean, there was a period of a long stretch of time where I was a poet and a mother, which are the two to me, most valuable vocations, but the least yeah. respected, you know, and, uh, but I, I just love, it's a calling for me, you know? And I think that, I mean, my whole life revolves around getting down to the page at my desk every day. Yeah. Yeah. And how do I create a structure that supports that and takes care of a kid? And, and then the good part is I can help take care of my community too. It's good life. That's important to you. That's something I actually did make a note of in my chicken scratch over here which is the things that you do you, you always talked about your community mm -hmm. you know that it's not just about making my life better I, I like to have an effect on those around me yeah. and you've always been very active in that kind of uh that kind of act active in that kind of activity okay i'm all right i'm supposed to talk better than that okay. but um, why is that important to you i mean let's establish that again that you were born here and I mean, you could just go through life writing poems about yourself and, and probably do keep, keep St. Pete lit also and just stay in a bubble. But yeah. you're an activist. I, I don't know. I mean, I was a subscribed to Greenpeace magazine when I was in middle school. Like it's, hmm. I've always been like um, very empathetic and, and aware of um, oppressed people and um, like even recently I was kind of burning out because, you know, COVID is here, uh, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, which is not a new movement, but you know, everything, everything feels so heightened right now. Our presidency, <laughs> if you call it that, um, not going I, there. <laughs> I, I, I was really, I was really burning myself out and I kind of, I'm taking a class right now about embodied activism about, you know, especially as an introvert, you use the word active and activism, but as an introvert, being too public and too out there burns you out. So what does that mean? Embodied activism. I mean, define that. It means you kind of stay in your, how do you feel in your safe zones? How do you feel in your body? Are you burned out? Are you overwhelmed? Because mm -hmm. activism can get very heady and very like, just go and charge, but there's different roles that people can play. And I, I'm realizing I'm a storyteller. I'm also a weaver of connecting different people, um, visionary. Um, so figure out what your lane is, you know, where, where yeah. can you bring the most help? And then I said to myself, you know, just try to do one thing a day. And I was realizing I'm sometimes doing three or four, but in my mind, I'm still um, not doing enough. So it's, I was burning myself out. That's a danger, and that's always a danger, especially as somebody who's would kind of more prefer to sort of be at home. Yeah. Staring out the window and dreaming, right? I mean, you know. I, I, kimono, I call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah I, I popped into my head, Maureen. Do you ever, do you still go fishing? Do you? You know, um, you come you from a family of fishermen, so let's put I that know. out. 
Well, I'm going to have to go fishing because I, you inspired me last week when we met over coffee at Wonderful Book and Bottle. That I need to write right about your fa your family. About yeah. my family. Yeah, and um, it's been uh, gestating about the form of what that looks like. And so one of the chapters will be fishing. So I'm going to, I want to do a book of prose poetry. Um, and what it's looking like is 12 chapters and each chapter is a different uh, one word title. And, mm. uh, it, and I was talking to my mom about it today because, you know, we have a very dynamic family history and I want to make sure to show not only the historical parts, but also the challenging parts. And, um, and, and my grandmother passed away about four years ago. So she's moving into a space of mythology and I was kind of waiting for that distance. Um, yeah. So well, the, the old, well, Captain Hubbard's been dead for 30 years or something, hasn't he? I was 18. I was 18. Okay. So, so a while, well, a while, yeah. You, you, do the, you do the math. Yeah, I can do the math. We'll, yeah. let the, we'll let everybody guess. I just wanted, it just occurred to me because I remember you talking to me about being a little kid out there at, at John's Pass and, you know, the Hubbard's Marina and all that stuff. And uh, I wondered if that was just all gone. I mean, it's got to, it had to be instilled in you as at a very early age. That well, I think that also that like um, wanting creative control and uh, create your own reality and that kind of carny spirit of just like, oh, this will be fun. Let's try it. You know, let's put some let's put a tent up and and make some signs and ha tell people to come and see what happens <laughs> and yeah. put a whole cast the characters together and be creative. And I mean, that's that's what it's nice about having some distance because I'm really seeing like, whoa. I mean, my grandfather started with rowboats and cane poles and then yeah. created this multi-million dollar business that's still going, that supported a, l a large portion of his family. So, you know, um, it's, it's just that, I don't know, there's a lot to it. I'm, I'm gonna, it's gonna be an interesting year of kind of unpacking it, you know, and, and how mm -hmm. does the tides fit in and how does the fishing fit in? And I mean, his motto is if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm actually going to do a, a vintage piece about the old John's Pass Aquarium, which I've written about a little bit, which is where uh, one, of, one of his two bottlenose dolphins from the old San Key pen ended up as Patty the Porpoise. Yeah, I, there's, yeah, it goes Patty way and, back. Yeah, after they're my aunt and uncle, Patty and Michael. Well, is, that, is that what it was from? See, I need to talk. When I write this, I need to talk with you about it again. Yeah, yeah. What would you have done differently? Uh, at where you are now in your life? Uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> we're, all, we're all now a product of what we've done and where we've been. That's the way I look yeah, at it. I don't, uh, probably, uh, I can't even say that. I would say start on my mental health quicker. quicker. Uh, probably start swimming earlier. <laughs> You're I mean, a swimmer. I, you, you mentioned that. That's part of your, your whole self-care thing. Is, is Yeah, your, yeah. I'm working on a, a poem about it. I'm reading multiple books about swimming. Uh, I always wanted to swim, but I never mm -hmm. saw myself as an athlete uh, at all because I was mm -hmm. a bookworm. And I, it, it's like been this lifelong quest to get into the pool and swim laps. And I, you know, I've had multiple situations where I was around swimmers, like college and after college, and I would just long to, to do it. And I didn't start doing it until I was 43. And it's like I swim three days a week, and it's like, it's like that my saving grace. That's so, funny. I would have thought that you know your, your your uncles and aunts would have tossed you over the side of the boat when you were three. Yeah, but like that swimming pool is different. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. like yeah. We didn't, I didn't grow up with a swimming pool, and the yeah. the idea of like going somewhere and swimming laps like that. I actually was on the swim team in sixth grade, but I would like I didn't have control, <laughs> so I would quit and like get my feelings really hurt before I understood that I'm a deep feeling person. And then I'd be like, peace out, you know? But, and then you move on to the next thing. Oh God. I, I could tell, I could tell you someday I'll tell you stories doing, doing stuff like that too. Shooting myself in the foot to be true yeah. to myself. And, you know, I, I always have this thing where I'd say, you know, people make me nuts. I don't need anybody around me. And, you know, everybody disappoints you. And I go through all that stuff and then I'd be sort of alone one day saying, man, I, I kind of miss having people around. 
Yeah. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, really? It's like I'm you can't live way. with them, you can't live without them, right? <laughs> the same way. Well, it's like, you know, I'm overwhelmed, yeah. I'm overwhelmed, I need to be quiet, I need to be quiet. And then I have enough quiet time, I'm like, I'm bored, I need to go out, I need to go out. I'm <laughs> no overwhelmed. Really little stimulation. It's the constant, it's that constant cycle. That's why you cats know. are good, because you never can, they just wander in when they feel like it, you know. Yeah, really. Yeah. I have three cats. Black, and two they, black cats. Yeah. Very zen. One of ours is black. She has a big white patch up here. She was, she came with us from Savannah. She was born in the alley behind our office, under the dumpster. Yeah. And uh, on and on. We're at the end of our time. You believe that already? Oh. What didn't I ask you? What do you want to talk about? Is, is there, you know, what's the, when's the next typewriter talks and who's it with? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about typewriter talks is a weekly online series that mm -hmm. we created pretty much because of COVID times and yeah. you are our latest we just posted today episode 16 and yeah. it's a weekly online series where you know I've always wanted to get into the brains of writers and see what makes them tick kind of like the actor studio with James Lipton mm -hmm. um, I loved watching those and um, uh, you know we just started it and it's been really interesting to see everybody's different like everybody's led by some people are led by characters, some people are led by plot, some people write in the morning, some people write just for themselves. It's really, it's really fascinating to see. But we have this plethora of, of writers in Tampa Bay. Sure. And I really wanted to, um, you know, showcase them. And also, as you mentioned, it's with selfish reasons. It, it interests me, so. Oh, sure. So why am I here? Why am I, you know, it's, uh, Lori Roy, I think, is going to do a Catalyst session soon, and, and I'm hoping. He's on my list. You, yeah. When you, you, I mentioned my friend John Capoya yesterday, who wrote that book, Florida Soul, and I just He's emailed him saying, you know, yeah, 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 it's amazing stuff. So when is when is the it's is it weekly? Every, Tuesday, talks? every Tuesday morning we post one. Um, mm -hmm. I am interviewing Cherie Greer, who is the founder and executive director of Kitchen Table Literary Arts, which oh. focuses on promoting African-American women writers. So she'll be next week, if all goes well. And then I just talked to Kathy Celestri, who mm -hmm. um, used to be the arts entertainment editor for Creative Loafing, but she, and she also wrote a book, Back Roads of Paradise. Sure. Yeah. And she just purchased the Gabber News. The Gabber. I heard about that. She used to be on our board. Congratulations, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. So it, we 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 have a history together, and uh, I just want to like you know pick her brain too. So, but I you know it, the main thing is to. That's quite a brain on Kathy. Kathy right. Is, oh yeah. Brilliant. She really is. Yeah. So I want to make sure that we show a diverse group of writers. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to lean more towards women, which is kind of funny, but it's all good. Well, I was the exceptional, I guess. I guess that should be no. yeah. honored. Yeah. We had Paul Wilborn and Bob Devin Jones and um, but I wanna there's a lot of writers I think that are writing here that people might not be aware of, not because they're not aware outside of people are aware of them outside of Saint Petersburg, but mm -hmm. maybe not locally. So it's So fun. you you said that uh ideally you'd be moving into the uh, the factory September? Yeah, I'm really excited about that. The factory is um, going to be an art mecca. And uh, we're yeah. going to share all with the St. Pete Art Alliance and Tampa Bay Business for the Culture and the Arts. And you just had Liz, Liz Dimmitt on mm -hmm. the fairgrounds. And I mean, I have no idea the potential collaborations that are going to come out of that hotbed. So right. that's, that's something else to be excited about for, you know. And we'll have to see, like, we're, we're going to have office space. But with COVID, we'll have to see how it works out. I may may keep working from home. Yeah. Well, I was going to say you can open in September, but yeah. it may not be the center of your universe for a while. Yeah. And we, I just started coming there. back in here this two weeks ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. And we have an office, so closed doors and, but you know, there, it depends on their timeline. I mean, yeah. construction always has a wild, but the Behars, um, uh, Behar Petronez, I'm sorry if I said the last name wrong. They have been huge supporters of our organization and had yeah. given the desk table to work at and, you know jordan and kara are wonderful so yeah they're great people all to be there they're you know giving us a space to incubate they're you know supporting us which is huge because we don't have a brick and mortar right now and uh, i think you know, the first time I, I came to visit you you, you were in the Behar's office yeah yeah we were we we were there until um covid hit and then we kind of backed out. So 
I've been working from home in my robe. <laughs> Maureen McDowell, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure with you, Bill. And, and uh, check me to typewriter talks on Keep St. Pete Lit. Oh, on right. Facebook, yes, because we'll, Bob, we'll cross Bill, promote. We promised we would do that. Bill, yeah. Bill is featured uh, as of this morning on Keep St. Yep. Pete Lit. Facebook. It's it's it'll be the longest forty five minutes of your life, folks. If you watch that, she said. Well, sometimes that goes as long as a half an hour, and I think I was. Well, I know. I know you're a storyteller. I knew. <laughs> knew. Well, good. you got nothing else to do, folks. Anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will see you uh, down the road, if not sooner. All right. Take care of yourself, sweetie. Take care.